This is Broadcast House, 40th and Brandywine Streets, Washington, D.C., February 10th, 1954. Here to show you in your home through our new home is Eddie Gallagher. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadcast House. Well, it, uh, it finally happened. After years of hoping and months of planning and weeks of uh, construction and preparation, we're at last ready to show you our new home, and we're pretty proud of it. Now, this is the house that we live in. We'd like to show you around, show you some of the people, take you behind the scenes, and show you how Broadcast House works. But before we look at the present, let's uh, take a look at the past. Now, I'm standing in the, uh, in the reception room. This is the first place you come into Broadcast House. Now, on my right here is the receptionist desk. When you come in, she uh, assists you in every way possible. And beyond the receptionist desk to the back is our telephone switchboard. And at that switchboard is our chief operator, a young lady I'd like to have you meet right now. This is uh, Marie McGrain, ladies and gentlemen, our chief operator here at Broadcast House. Hi, Marie. Hi, Eddie. How are you I see doing? you every morning when I come in for the no, sundown. Oh, yeah. How long have you been here at WTOP, Marie? 21 years. Gee, that's quite a long time, isn't it? I'm huh? afraid so. I suppose you've seen some uh, wonderful people parade through these studios in that time, haven't yes, you? Yes, I have, and we've lost a lot of boys that originated with us. Thank Warren you. Sweeney and Larry yes. Elliott, mm -hmm. Hugh Conover, Joe King. Mm -hmm. Aren't you leaving out one pretty important guy? Oh, yes, off the guard for no. that imp of Satan. <laughs> what are you calling that for, Marie? Oh, the tricks he used to play on me down at the other studio. It was terrific. I mean, uh, like what? Well, um, he'd sneak out the door, you know, and he'd look out there and he'd see me sitting at the switchboard drinking coffee, and yeah. he'd go back and open up the microphone and he'd say, uh, Folks, call Marie up. She's sitting out there doing nothing but drinking Tom O'Donnell's coffee. <laughs> right away, the, the board would light up like Pennsylvania Avenue inauguration time, <laughs> asking for records to be played. Marie, that certainly sounds like Godfrey. <laughs> Marie, nice to have you meet our audience. I know you're in for some wonderful days here at WTOP. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you a lot. That was Marie McGrain, our chief operator. Now, I'm walking along our, uh, our reception room, and to my right over here, this is television master control. That's where all the programs in television are fed, and in turn, they go to our transmitter or put on the air over Channel 9, and you receive them in your home. That's like the heart of our television station. Now, we're walking down here along the side. This is our Freedom Sphere. We'll tell you more about that a little later on. Over here is the entrance to Television Master Controls. This is where the engineers come in and out when they go to work. And, of course, we have some nice uh, chairs for here to rest on. Now, as you come down our uh, passageway, you take a little S-turn here, see? This is sort of like a zig and a zag. And as you do, you come down here and you notice that uh, there's a little incline here. Now, this leads to one of our big television studios, and I want you to come along with me. This is the entrance that you see right down here to Studio 11. Now, Studio 11 is, uh, is a beautiful thing. It's got 3,000 square feet of floor space. It has all the latest electronic equipment to bring you the finest in television uh, programs. This is Studio 11, and I'm standing out in front of it right now. Now, on uh, my left, we want you to see it, there's a, there's a little hall. Now, this hall leads to our two other television studios, and one of them is Studio 13. Well, heads it rains and tails it shines. I'm Louie Allen. I suppose that some folks actually think that predicting the weather is no more than ma a matter of tossing a coin. Actually, it's the teamwork of thousands of weather observers all over the world who observe the weather, send it to Washington where it's analyzed and interpreted, and then we pass it on to you. Speaking of teamwork, one of our members of our 630 report is a gal who gets into the doggone situations, Donna Douglas. Hi there. I never know where they're going to send me next, whether it's riding a fire engine, being a waitress at People's Drug Store, or driving a taxi cab, or even selling peanuts at Griffith Stadium on opening day, where incidentally I might meet someone uh, very much like this fellow, Maurice Siegel. Well, Don, if you're selling peanuts, you can put me down for a ton or so, I can tell you that right now. This uh, business of reporting sports on television, a lot of fun in it, and we sort of like to make predictions every now and then, tell you who's going to win in advance. And when those things don't happen, like uh, it turned out in the Orange Bowl game, sports reporters are never upset. It's always the team that's upset. But one guy who, who can't make any predictions about what's going to come, but who just reports the news as it happens, is Don Richards. Reporting the news from anywhere is a pretty serious business. But reporting it from Washington, the news capital of the world, makes it especially important that the news we bring you is accurate and up-to-date. Now, it's not by any means a one-man job. It requires the untiring efforts of film men, reporters, photographers, what have you, and many, many more. All of whom join me in saying, welcome to Broadcast House. 
You've met uh, some of the B broadcast house people who work in Studio 13. And now let's go across the hall to the other studio I was telling you about, number 12, and an old friend of yours, Mark Evans. Hi there. You know, they're never quite sure just exactly where to put me on this thing. They're in somewhat of a quandary. Uh, the facts of the matter are I'm on this set uh, five days a week, and then I'm on a couple of days uh, a week over in the other studio on my night show. Uh, I have a very capable assistant who presides over the kitchen whom I'd like to have you meet, Angela Bayer. I, I'm on every morning a uh, couple hours and then in the afternoon for an hour. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter too much where I am as long as some nice people like you are around to, to catch what we have to say. Or, frankly, around my house and my small fry, we have problems. And this is the source of the problem. He's just down from Old Smokey. Here's Pick Temple. Hi there, Rangers. You old timers, too. You know, one of the nice things about the new facilities at Broadcast House is the fact that they've let me expand my ranch so that now I can, well, I can have dozens of you rangers here to visit me every day at Old Sagebrush. That's mighty nice. I'm very proud of it. And you know what? Lady's proud of it, too. You wouldn't think so, seeing her sleeping in her bunk there, but she's really proud of it. And now, say, let's use a special kind of hocus-pocus magic and get back to Eddie Gallagher in Studio 11. Hocus. Focus. Change the picture. <laughs> it worked again, Peck, just as it always does. And now we'd like you to meet some of the people who work here in Studio 11. Wednesday, February 10th. 7-7 seven, seven Eastern Standard Time, and here's Roy Meacham. Hi there, and a very pleasant good evening to you. Well, this is where we were just 12 hours ago, and we'll be just 12 hours from now. Each morning when you get up to go about beginning your chores for the day. Our chore is to, well, to start you off on the right foot with the news, the weather, the sports, music, those things which help a day to get off to a good beginning. For example, this morning, Don Gaynor's weather ran something like this. It'll be fair today with a high today about 48, generally fair tonight and Thursday becoming windy and colder tomorrow. The low tonight about 30 degrees. Right now it stands 28 degrees, humidity 81%. And about the news, Barry Barents had this to say. Two Democrats blast administration policy on Indochina. Sports also came into consideration when Peter O'Reilly came up with this headline. GW maintains its unblemished record in the Southern Conference. Joe Holup sets a new scoring record as the Colonials whip Furman 102 to 97. And that's sort of basically the way it goes around here each morning between 7 to 9, uh, Monday through Saturday. And speaking of Saturday, if you're around a radio, come 5 o'clock Saturday afternoon, I'd like to invite you to join me for Meacham with Music. The same thing goes for Sunday noon. Well, you've already met our next-door neighbor, Donna Douglas. And the young man who lives next door to her is a fellow who comes strolling up from the Lazy River each morning on Channel 9. Up the Lazy River By the old river Lazy, lazy river By the new day sun Hi. You see Lazy River by the noonday sun and the morning sun, too, but things are a little bit more peaceful here at night. In fact, Wally and Ginty have already turned in, and just about everybody's asleep, except for a few crickets and a couple of frogs over here by the river. But in the daytime, we're kind of busy, and we don't get a chance to get in the city very often, but we knew some building was going on. Yes, sir, we started getting letters from places from which we haven't heard before. And, uh... They tell me that this new tower they have is just about 800 feet above Lazy River. Just imagine how high. 800 feet. And they did all of that in order that WTOP television could bring you a much better picture. Well, about time for me to turn in, too. Glad you could stop by a minute or so. There's a young fellow I'm sure you'll want to meet waiting for you back at Broadcast House, Alan Jeffers. Okay, Johnny Q. Now, um, just so we don't go wrong, we'll start our bit with a song, and every weekday morning. Down and help us all out. It's simply great. 
Which is our way of saying that we would like to have you with us every weekday at 3.30, either in person or in your home, where many of you watch Ron Cochran and the News on Channel 9, Monday through Saturday at 11. We don't often get on with the singers. On WTOP, both radio and television news, you get the up-to-the-minute accurate news coverage by the Washington staff of CBS Radio and Television News, and from the news capitals of the world, CBS correspondents file their fully uh, informed reports to keep you up to the minute with what's going on in this world today. And now we'd like you to meet a gentleman who's been a pretty busy boy around here for quite a while. This is our vice president, it's the first time I've met a vice president in a long time, in charge of engineering here at Broadcast House, Clyde Hunt. Well, Clyde, it's nice to have you with us, and I suppose you would say that, well, WTOP has certainly come a long way, hasn't it? It certainly has, Eddie. What were the old days like, Clyde? Well, it'd be difficult to go into all the history, but a point for a good brief resume probably would be in 1932 when the uh, Columbia Broadcasting System brought WJSB from Mr. John S. Baines. We were in the Shoreham building with our studios at that time, and the transmitter was out by Mount, Ver Mount Vernon. Then uh, we moved into the Warner building in 1933, and we opened up with a 50,000-watt transmitter out in Wheaton, Maryland in 1940. 1943 uh, was when we changed the call letters from WJSV to WTOP. <laughs> then in 1949, uh, WTOP was sold by CBS to WTOP Incorporated. We stayed in the Warner Building with our studios and offices about 20 years till we moved out here to Broadcast House. Uh, Clyde, uh, that's a wonderful story, and I know that there's lots of things we could talk about, but you've seen lots of changes over the years, the, the, uh, the wonderful equipment that we have, but what's next for our, uh, our listeners and viewers? Well, of course, I think thing that's on most people's mind now is color television. We're going to have it here, Clyde? Yes, within a couple of months we should be able to retransmit the color programs of the CBS network and possibly about this time next year, maybe a little sooner, a little early, we should be able to originate full color programs here from the studios and broadcast house. That's wonderful. Clyde, thank you very much and I'm sure that our viewers have enjoyed meeting one of the many men behind the scenes. Clyde Hutt, Vice President in Charge of Engineering. Thank you, Clyde. Okay. Well, up to now you've met most of the people who have been on the air or behind the camera. And uh, there's a lot of other people, too, bringing you your favorite programs from Broadcast House into your homes. For instance, out in Wheaton, Maryland, there's a trio of 350-foot towers beaming our 50,000-watt radio signal for hundreds of miles. This building at the base of the towers houses the complex and delicate mechanisms that are required for radio transmission. This gentleman is an engineer. He's playing the records for Roger T Fleet, who comes on every night with music until dawn. That's Roger Fleet you're seeing now. Here in this newsroom, bulletins and stories coming in from every section of the globe are received, analyzed, and written into the scripts for our radio and television news programs. This battery of teletype machines receives information from all the major wire services. The music library is one of the most important parts of WTOP. Here, thousands of records to suit your taste are kept, and you let us know what your tastes are. The television art department provides sets, letters, title cards, prepares props, and specializes in a peculiar kind of magic which is so necessary to your programs. And speaking of magic, it is from this room called Telecine that motion pictures are projected, commercial slides are inserted, as well as other visual material that does not require a live camera. Traffic and continuity are a couple of highly specialized words. To us in broadcasting, they mean the preparation of the daily schedule, the timetable by which the station operates. We read the daily schedule to find out when and where we do our programs. Film technicians consult the daily schedule to find out when to insert commercial films and how to prepare a motion picture for projection. Overlooking Studio 11 is the Columbia Room. Here we receive our distinguished guests and have pre-programmed conferences. And just as in any other building of this size, we have the Boiler Room with its gigantic machinery to heat and cool our studios and offices. And also for the people at Broadcast House, there's the cafeteria for breakfasts, lunches, and dinners too. And of course, the inevitable and very welcome quick cup of coffee. This then is more